Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Osman Ali and we will discuss uh, a note receivable numerical here in the video. Uh, such a note receivable which is issued at face value. So at the end of this slide, I will discuss what actually note issued at face value means. So let's go through the numerical data which is given to us. So we are representing Balance Bar Co company which has given uh, another company by the name of biofoods a hundred thousand dollars okay and in return of that the biofood company has given them a hundred thousand dollar note okay which has a life of five years and he the biofood company has promised that the biofood gonna pay eight percent interest annually to the balance bar company actually if the same note receivable uh, issued at, in the market having the same level of risk involved which is currently involved with the bio food then the market interest rate will also be eight percent so it's like such a contract where the contract interest percentage is eight percent and the market interest rate is also eight percent actually so because of this, when the market interest rate and contract interest rate is same, we call it as issued at face. Why? Because in the next part of the numerical, we would learn this thing that the money that we are paying today and the money that we intend to receive after five years, both of them are same. That's why it, it becomes issued at face actually. If I make the timeline of the question, so the timeline of the question would look like this, that 8% will be paid, 8% of $100,000 is $8,000. So $8,000 will be paid by the biofood to the balance bar company at the end of year one, at the end of year two, year three, year four, and year five. So these eight, 8,000 is actually the stream of equal cash flows and there is an equal time interval in between each cash flow also. And as the payments are made at the end of the year, that makes it ordinary annuity. And then obviously at the end of the fifth year, uh, the balance bar company is expecting $100,000 back also. So that's the uh, data of the numerical. Uh, let's go and to the solution part of the numerical. And the solution of the numerical is based on actually three steps. Our step number one would be to find the present value of the note receivable because whatever is my present value that is I'm going to record it to my books of accounts. My step number two uh, would be kind of like reverse amortization table if needed. It does not mean it is needed in every numerical if needed. Okay. Like in this numerical we do not need it. I know that from now you will also explore it soon. But in the other numericals related to note receivables, definitely we're going to need them. Okay. And the journal entries related to note receivables, we, so these are the three steps of the numerical. Let's go to the solution part of it. So we have gone through the basic uh, uh, requirement of the numerical and we have gone through uh, the data given to us. So I've just summarized it before starting the uh, solution of the question that the contract interest rate which is given to us in the numerical is 8% whereas the market interest rate is also 8%. The face value of the note receivable is $100,000 and the life of the note receivable is 5 years. So based on this data, uh, we would calculate the PMT which means that the payment that will be made by the borrower to the lender uh, and on periodic basis and in our numerical, it's E annual basis, so it would be per year, uh, which is coupon rate multiplied by face value. So that is 8% of the 1 lakh. So that becomes $8,000. Means if I make the timeline for this such payment, so the company will receive 8,000, 8,000, 8,000 for the five years at the end of every year, which makes this 8,000, 8,000 as ordinary annuity. And the company is also... Uh, uh, rightful to receive $100,000 at the end of the fifth year also from the borrower side. Now, our first step in the accounting for note receivable would actually be to calculate that how much value should be used to record the note receivable. So the step number one is done to calculate the present value of the note receivable because if you remember, 
in the slides we discussed it that the note receivables, if it's long term, then they would be recorded based on the present value basis. Okay, so as it is an ordinary annuity, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000. So you see here, I have used the present value ordinary annuity formula and one lakh dollar is a one-time cash flow. It's not an annuity. So I have used a simple future present value formula in order to calculate the present value of both of the type of cash flows. So the payment that we are actually receiving is $8,000 per year. The one minus one divided by one plus the market interest rate. The market interest rate that we have is 8%. Okay. And the life is five years divided by the market interest rate, which is again 8%. Now our face value is hundred thousand dollars divided by again market interest rate eight percent and raised to the power five because the life is five years here okay so let's proceed eight thousand and one minus one divided by one point zero eight so i've just added one plus with zero point zero eight so i will just only do this one additional thing in this step and this would become 1.08 raised to the power 5 now I will go for the powers so it would be 1 minus 1 divided by 1.08 power 5 so this would give me a result of 1.4693 ladies and gentlemen do remember that I am using rounded values there are values after 3 also but I am using rounded values okay then this would become 1 lakh divided by 1.4693. Then let's more simplify the equation. So that's 8,000, 1 minus. Now I will divide it. 1 divided by 1.4693. If I divide this, it becomes 0 0.6806. And again, it's a rounded value. So there is no need to say it on every step that I'm using rounded values. So we're going to take it for all the remaining steps. And $100,000 divided by 1.4693, this will become $68,059.62. Okay. Let's further simplify the equation. So this time I'm going to subtract 0 0.6806 from the 1. So this would become 8,000. And 1 minus 0 0.6806. 6806 this will become 0 0.3194 divided by 0 0.08 plus 68059.62 okay okay so uh, let's divide it 8000 and i'm going to divide 0 0.3194 by 0 0.08 this gives me 3.9925 and the rest of the figures would remain same in the step. Now I will multiply 8,000 with 3.9925. I get $31,940 and 68,059.62 dollars. So if I add them up, it gives me a value of 99,999.62 dollars which we can say that it's almost $100,000. So look at this, ladies and gentlemen. When the market interest rate and the contract interest rate is actually same, so the value or the money that you have to pay today and the money that you intend to receive after five years will also be same. This won't be same when we will solve other numericals, you will observe this thing. That's the reason that we call this as issued at face. Issued at face means whatever is written in the face value means whatever the money you intend to receive, you will pay the same money today. And why are you going to pay the same money today? It's because of the same interest rate of the market and the contract. So that's only the step number one. Let's go to the step number two and step number three as well of the numerical. Okay. Step number two is regarding the discount amortization table. 
Now, it's not necessary that every type of note receivable needs discount amortization. It depends on the type of note receivables that you are having. In this case, we, as we are doing a note receivable which is issued at face, Issued at face, as earlier discussed, means that the market interest rate and the contract interest rate is same. And because of that, the money that we are supposed to pay today and the money that we expect to receive at the end of the contract is also same. So as when face value is equal to the money that you are paying today, in such case, discount amortization table is not required. It is only used or utilized when you are paying a different money than you what you expect to receive at the end of the contract. For sure, we're going to use amortization table in our other numericals, but not the numerical related to the issued ad phase. Okay, then let's go to the third step. The third step is regarding the journal entries. So today we received a note receivable from BioFoods company. If I am receiving a note receivable, ladies and gentlemen, so obviously, note receivable so it's an asset and if i'm receiving it it would be debited increase in asset is debit how much worth of a note receivable i'm receiving i'm receiving a note receivable of hundred thousand dollars okay the question is why are you receiving this much worth of note receivable because i am paying cash so how much cash you are paying i am paying hundred thousand dollar also so this is the journal entry that you're gonna make it at the time when you pay the money and you receive a note receivable from the bio food company. Then what will happen next? Then I will wait for an year and at the end of the year one, I intend to receive money. How much worth of money I intend to receive? $8,000 if you remember, okay? Let's go back to our cash flows. We will receive $8,000 in the first, second, third, fourth and fifth year, okay? So $8,000 we will receive and why you are receiving it? What is this $8,000 for us? It is actually called as our interest revenue interest earned. Okay, so we're going to credit the revenue by $8,000 because increase in revenue is credit increase in asset is debit. That's the entry. We're going to do it at the end of the first year. Then what next? Second year. Okay. So what entries we're gonna do for second year? We will receive the same 8,000 for the second year also. And we will receive once again the same 8,000 for the third year also. And we're gonna receive the same 8,000 for the fourth year also. And then we enter into the fifth year. So in the fifth year, first we will receive this $8,000. And along with that, as this is the last day, okay, in the life of the note receivable, that's the maturity date. So the note receivable will be matured, which means that the bio food company will pay me my $100,000 back. And as soon as they pay me this money, so obviously I had a uh, note receivable, which will now finish because if I am receiving money, that's debit. And why I'm receiving money? Because uh, BioFood have just settled their note receivable account. So that's like a decrease in asset is then a credit for me here. By the way, you can combine these two entries and you can make a compound journal entry of this as well. I, as I was following the same sequence, so I just did it separately. So that's the entries. It is related to the note receivable if it is issued at face. In the first step, we solved the present value. Okay, why we needed to have a present value? Because we want to know that how much money will actually be paid by us. Although that we are receiving or we expect to receive $100,000 at the end of the fifth year, but how much today? Because this today value, we're going to use it. Okay. And then if this value that we are paying today and the value that we are receiving in the future, if they are different, then we will do the discount amortization as well. I'm going to explain that in the next numerical because we do not need discount amortization in this numerical as the money that we are paying today and the money that we expect to receive at the end of the contract is same. So we jumped to the third step. That's the last step. And these are 
the journal entries related to this note receivable. Okay, the asset and the revenues accounts are actually used here. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you got the point that what is the accounting and the valuation of the note receivable. If you remember, I told you that all that we need to learn in intermediate accounting is valuation. And that's how you find the value of a note receivable if it is issued at face. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe.